Hey, what's up? It's Jim, and today I'm going to talk about Wave Twisters from 2001. There aren't a lot of animated hip-hop movies. In fact, I can't think of any other than, like, Rhapsody Street Kids or something, and I don't know if I'd really count that. And even if there are, there aren't any that are really truly surreal and strange and kind of get into the kind of postmodern oddity that hip-hop really is. And Wave Twisters absolutely does that, taking a DJ Kubert album of the same name, which was made three years before this movie, and taking early computer animation and After Effects to make an adult swim animation kind of type movie pre-adult swim and it's probably one of the few kind of cultish animated films that will truly make you feel like you're probably sort of high or at least take you back to the feeling of being high in some like hip-hop kids dorm room while they go hey check this cool thing out that I got. Wave Twisters has that kind of really cool fun vibe to it. It's probably one of the few movies that you would put on at a party and most of the times when you say I'm gonna put on a movie at a party that usually means you're gonna mute the audio so you could like listen to music and talk over it because the visuals are really cool and I guess you could do that with Wave Twisters but I think the main thing with Wave Twisters is it's one of the few party movies where you would actually want to turn up the volume and listen to the music and have it be on at the party. It's almost like the perfect party movie because it works in that way. It's not necessarily a very plot centric film but it is a, like a cool surreal bizarre kind of animated film and if you're into hip hop and into like turntablism because this is a DJ it's kind of a scratch album and it plays in the kind of beautifulness of kind of that and the flow that you have of someone scratching and turning records it feels like the flow of turntablism it flows in a way that few music movies can do which is actually kind of trying to emulate the music that is being played in a real visual medium it almost feels like an overlong awesome music video but one that really kind of takes you on a real musical journey I almost felt like I probably fell in love with this music more through this movie and I'd heard some of the before when I realized later I was like I know some of these DJ Cuber tracks I've definitely heard them before but now like I want the album and stuff although apparently the album's a little different from what's in the movie it feels like a cool underground mixtape that I absolutely fell in love with but as an animated film and I just kind of love this cool awesome hip-hop vibe that Wave Twisters has all throughout it this film like I said doesn't really have a plot I mean it does but kind of does its own thing really the plot that it says it has at least and you can understand a plot it's not like completely unable to understand or something but a dj and dentist called the dental commander teams up with his friends a graffiti artist named honey drips a robot named mc rubbish and a break dancer named grandpa who is from a bygone era before lord oak and his evil minions and the red worm which is a baby with a worm in it who i think is lord oak or something i forget and they have to break back the uh, lost arts of hip-hop breakdancing graffiti emceeing and dj because they were gone from total extinction by lord oak and they've come to bring them back as dental commander has a cool like hip-hop wristwatch thing which was actually on dj kubert's album cover and they go and fight various villains to hopefully bring back the four lost arts of hip-hop and stop lord oak from suppressing them for so long one of the coolest things about this film i think is how it was released because they had various different premieres with various different cuts which also makes me think like the version I saw did that have certain music and maybe other versions didn't because I know they rearranged songs I heard the album and it's ordered differently some of the songs are different and then they have different versions in the movie and so forth so I know they premiered different cuts I'm wondering if the music was different in each of those cuts which maybe I don't have anything to back that up I'm just kind of making shit up basically I know they released this on VHS but not in your traditional way when you would release something on VHS it was copy production meaning you couldn't copy over it or you couldn't theoretically copy it onto another tape but it, that was really easy to do but they they had a thing so you couldn't do that with wave twisters they just released it kind of like on regular vhs's so it wasn't copy protected they wanted to just kind of get it out there i think actually that's really cool frankly it has a real cult movie vibe and knowing that kind of release i think gives it that like this isn't like really a mainstream film i could honestly see this playing on a channel at midnight how this hasn't played on adult swim 
Blue. If this has, I couldn't find anything to show that it had. And I know it has gotten official releases. It's on YouTube. You can watch it there to rent. It was on Hulu at one point. I don't know if I don't have Hulu, so I don't know if it still is. But it has been like officially released. So I think it would fit perfectly. It feels like kind of like almost what Space Ghost definitely uh, did before it, but it feels almost more like Sea Lab or Aqua Teen from what it's doing. No one has any connection from what I can see. I don't know if DJ Kubert did music for Aqua Teen at one point or something like that. And the directors had no connection to Aqua Teen. I find it interesting how this was like Aqua Teen before there was Aqua Teen. It's Adult Swim before it was Adult Swim. Although Space Ghost was predates this, obviously, by a lot of years. But it definitely has that kind of idiosyncratic kind of satirical vibe. The animation reminds me a lot of Clutch Cargo in what it's doing. I keep reading in reviews and things about it. It reminds them of Hanna-Barbera. I don't really agree with that in terms of character design or anything. I mean, this is a film, it's limited animation, and it's the early days of using your computer to really make stuff and make films and things like that. Now it's like second nature, but at the time that was fairly new, and they make good use of it. They're ambitious, but they're ambitious in ways that they use so many different kind of things, and with the scratching and the music that's going on throughout it, it kind of goes with it, having this kind of freeformness and having this kind of limited animation, I think works with the film. If you didn't have the music for this, I don't think it would work as well as it does here. This is one of the rare animated films that doesn't have music written for it. It actually had pre-recorded music, although apparently they did different versions for the movie, so I don't know. They kind of did that, though. So, whatever. I really enjoyed this film. I, I had not never heard of it at all, and it reminded me of the early 2000s and going to college and hanging out with hip-hop heads and stuff like that, but I hadn't heard of it until the Nighthawk Cinema in Brooklyn was playing it in a series with uh, the Daft Punk movie Interstellar. I was like, what the hell is this? I've never even heard of this animated film, and I was like curious because it's rare I haven't heard of an animated film especially from the 2000s and i think this is kind of like a really cool genuine cult classic a turntablism movie that isn't just a documentary i think often when you're trying to capture music in a movie you're often doing the documentary thing like let's interview the artists and things like that you're not getting into the surrealism and how the music flows and how to fall in love with the music and how interesting and odd the music is and i think wave twisters goes into that in a certain way that i don't think someone talking about turntablism or hip-hop would it be able to to do as well as this does and it's able to also get DJ Hubert I'm assuming his own interests of like science fiction and Star Wars and Star Trek and but also kind of the 70s 60s 80s kind of vibes of all those things I guess I understand the Hanna-Barbera thing because it feels like that kind of a spacey cartoon it sort of reminds me of Sea Lab in a lot of ways this is really like the whole time I was like how did this happen before Adult Swim Adult Swim is missing out because this so goes into that but it predates it which is like awesome I think that's so cool. There's very few movies where the music is so great. I like almost want to dance while I'm watching it, but also pay attention. I think that's all throughout. I love the character designs, particularly of MC Rubbish. I think MC Rubbish looks awesome. I like that the main guy's a dentist, and I think it's cool to have a like wristwatch turntable thing. I really, really like this movie. I think this is a really cool find of an animated film. It's only about 46 minutes. It's not very long. It's really there to capture this album, so you know it's not going to be a normal feature length. If you're not kind of into weird animation and there's no dialogue in it you're just hearing like this kind of awesome music and stuff if you're not into this kind of music you're not into this kind of limited animation i'd say stay away from this because this movie doesn't want you and i don't want to hear your shitty opinions about it i think for the people that will like this movie you will fall in love with this film because it's such a unique interesting odd kind of film but it doesn't feel limited by its time period you hear about this being made at a time where it was harder to make things like this on a computer and at first you're like oh it's going to be like older and move clunkier and things like that. That isn't the case in this. This flows in such an excellent way. There's something to be said about a filmmaker who can take something and take the limited resources they have and get it to work. And I think Wave Twisters does that so excellently well. This is directed by Eric Henry and Sid Garon, and they did a great, amazing job, especially with the amazing, hypnotic, interesting music by DJ Kubert, who does an awesome job. It combines live action and puppets and stop motion and computer animation. All sorts of crazy shit goes on. Buckethead shows up seriously Buckethead just randomly shows up like this movie has everything and it has Buckethead this is one of the great cult classics of the 2000s and probably one that absolutely deserves to be in the canon the canon of cult movies I mean it inspires me to go like holy shit someone made a uniquely different animated film and a uniquely different hip hop movie I love hip hop but not always the greatest movies and I think uh, Wave Twisters pushes out a crazy weird surreal hip hop movie the way no one could have made
made it before and no one's really made since and I'm happy to have gone on this crazy strange trip that reminds me of smelling bad bong water and having debates about early Roots albums. Wave Twisters is the awesome surreal animated hip hop movie that you've been waiting for and if you haven't been waiting for it I don't think Wave Twisters cares because Wave Twisters is going to be here anyway going on in its own unique little corner and I think that's what's so frankly fucking awesome about it. So if you have seen Wave Twisters and you would like to talk about it then comment below in the comments and subscribe if you would like to.